In this tutorial, we'll be creating a geometry node system, which will allow you to displace text or any icon of your choosing. It will give you full control over the text input, text size, character spacing and subdivisions, the width and height of the extrusion, rings around your extrusion, and finally a toggle between choosing text or any object that you want. So let's get into it and let's get started. Select an object, hop on over to geometry nodes and hit new. Now we have the group input and the group output. First of all, I want to note that it's very nice when you're working with these shader or geometry type nodes to have the node wrangler add-on enabled. So make sure you have that enabled. And also while we're at it, make sure you have a import export scalable factor graphics or SVG um, enabled as well, which will allow you to import SVG icons. All right, so now we can control right click and drag over this cutting the link between the group output and the group input. We can take the group input and hit N, which will open up this window here, and we can actually delete the geometry input. Now let's add in our string to curves node, which will be the basis of our text. So this is the text node here. And if I plug this into the group output and I type in something like this, you will see there's text appearing in our scene. Now it is not nicely centered on the middle of our origin here, and we can fix that by changing this to the center and this to middle. This will make sure it's completely in the center of our scene. I'm going to use a different font here. So I'm going to use this one, which is my um, brand font. However, feel free to use websites like Google fonts, for example. And there's like hundreds of different fonts in here, which you can all download completely for free. All right. I actually want some control over this within our modifier. So when you are in a different workspace, for example, this one, I want to be able to change stuff without having to hop on over to geometry nodes workspace again. And we can do this by actually taking the group input here and inputting things like the string, for example. So let's just take this input over here, plug it in there, and there it is. Now let's also do this with the size and the character spacing. Now we have this one in here and we can change the name. So I'm gonna change this to text. So we can now change the text to anything that we want. So I'm gonna change it to, you know, let's say Patreon. It's out there, go check it out. Um, yeah, so change it to anything that you want. All right, so the text works. We have control over it. We can change the size. We can change the spacing. It works. So we have our string to curves node here. Now let's actually create a grid to work with. So I'm going to control right click and drag again, just removing the output there. And I'm going to add in a grid node. Now there it is. Now I'm going to take this into the group output and it will allow you to see the actual grid. I'm going to change the size here to 10 by 10, completely filling my camera in this case. And I want to have some control over these vertices. Now these vertices is what we are going to use as subdivisions. So I'm going to take this one over here and plug it into the group input again, then shift right click and drag. So not control, but shift instead, and which will add in a combine node there. So we can now use the same input, the vertices X in this case, for both the vertices X and vertices Y. So I'm going to take it over here and I'm going to call it subdivisions. Now we can change this to any number that we want. So if I hop on over to wireframe mode, you will see we have the grid here now and it has three subdivisions. So if I change this to six, you will get more and more and more and more. So I'm going to set it to about 500 for now, but we will increase it later. And we have lots and lots of faces to work with right now. So that's good. Now we can change the subdivisions to something that we want. Now to actually do something with all of these faces, we need to add in the node, which we'll always use for displacement. And it's called the set position node. Basically what this does, and I can show you right here, if I change the Z location, for example, it will just move all of the faces. It will just move the geometry basically in any direction that you want. But if I take like a noise texture, for example, and I take the factor and I plug it into the offset, you will see uh, it can also do this individually for each face. Now this creates some sort of alien rocky landscape so if you want to create that here's how you do that and instead let's just go ahead and let's remove this and let's use our text here to do the same basically to our grid so we have the string to curves node and if i take this and i plug it into the offset node nothing's happening nothing at all and the line is red as well indicating that it's not working as it should to actually fix this we need to add in some nodes the most important one being the geometry proximity node now if i take this in here before i do i will actually show you why this works is this can take a green input which comes out of here so a green output as well let's plug that in here and it can give a purple or a gray output now purple means a vector value basically like this and gray means a float value so a random value in general you will see if i use this position output here um, nothing's happening and that's because there's this eye icon over here now and which will indicate what's going on so if i hop on over here and i mouse over it you will see the input geometry has unsupported type curve so okay yeah maybe you should 
should change it to like a mesh or so. Let's try what happens then. Does this work? No, because it, does, it needs a profile curve. Okay, so that doesn't work. So what can we do then? Actually, let's use a fill curve node. Now, basically what this does is it will change your curves, your outlines there, and it will change them into um, mesh. So let me show how this looks. So if I mute this node with M, you will see this is the curve. And this is the output of our string to curves node. And if I hit M again, it will enable the fill curve node. And it's now actually some geometry there. So we can use that to work with. However, it's still doing something. It's saying, okay, instances in input geometry are ignored. And I'm not entirely sure what that means, but usually when it says that, you can fix it by adding in a realize instances node. So let's do that, plug it in between, and you see everything is gone now. Okay, so this should be working, however, it's not. And why is that? And that's because the position data in this case um, is not something that we are using. So instead, let's use our distance data and plug that into our offset here. This is working. It's doing something at least. I mean, it's not looking too hot, but you know, it does something. So it is uh, actually working. And what it's doing actually is adding in all of these um, displacement data for all faces going in every direction because this is a vector value and this is not, this is a float value. So we need to change that. And we can either do that by adding in a vector math node. This is not math. But what I like to do is actually use a combine XYZ node. Now, what this does is it will effectively limit the displacement that's being generated over here, uh, and it will limit it to one axis. So this is the X one, and it's not looking too good. And uh, I'm going to just use the Z axis. So now you will see it's just displacing only the Z axis. All right, so that works just fine, but we want some more control over how this looks. And to do that, we are going to use a map range node. Uh, it's a very trusty node, which usually gets the job done. Um, and as you can tell, it is getting the job done. Now it has four values from min, from max to min to max. Let's check out what each of these do. If I change the from min, what's happening? Okay. This sort of changes the thickness of our text, which could be a nice effect, I guess, but I'm not gonna touch it for now. Now we have the from max. Okay, so this decreases the, or increases the width of our displacement at the plane level. Okay, so maybe you can work with that. We have the two min uh, over here. Okay, so that looks kind of good as well because I wanna displace it up or down. And we also have the two max. Okay, we don't need this because basically what this does is it displaces the plane instead of the text. However, one important thing to note is that if I go into front view here and this is set to one, you will see the base level of our displacement is at one right now. So let's just set this to zero, effectively meaning that our plane is now completely on the ground floor, uh, giving us some better control. Like I said, we want to use this one and we want to use this one. So let's take another group input node and let's take the from max and plug it into a new one and take the two min and plug that into a new one as well. Now I'm going to right click the node here and choose collapse and hide unused sockets. So now we have a cleaner node, uh, which I think looks more appealing and helps me uh, keep overview of what is going on. Now we have the from max and two min and we have them over here as well. I'm just going to rename them so they are more clear to what they are. So I'm going to change this to width and I'm going to change this thing to height. Yep, there we go. Now let's change the values as well. So I think the width should be like what? The width minimum should be zero, I guess. Anything less than that doesn't really work. Yeah, okay, so zero is fine. And the maximum should be, uh, we're gonna set it at 10. Okay, let's do the same for the height here. So the height I want to be negative one to one at max. So basically meaning this is the max amount it's going up or this is the max amount it's going down. All right, so that's all working fine as well. And let's just set this thing to 0.2 as well. All right, so there's our text being displaced nicely. Okay, so this is the basic effect, actually almost completely done. It just needs two more notes and that's actually a set shade smooth one, which we'll plug in the end here, uh, which will make everything nicely shaded smooth. And finally, we need a material node. So set material, there it is. So I'm just gonna add in a new material and I'm just gonna call this one join the Patreon, you know, never heard, join it. So yep, let's just put that in there. This is the basic premise and it, this works just fine. If I increase these subdivisions here, you will see this becomes a lot more crisp. So it works fine. You can work with this, you can change this, you could animate it, you know, sort of displacing outward or displacing inward, whatever you want. It's a very simple and neat effect. However, I wanna show you some extra extra stuff which we can do. First of all, let's work on creating a shader. This is the basic setup. It's just the default white material and that actually looks pretty neat. I just, uh, just
just show you I have one area light over here, one area light over there with some high values. Also very important to note, I am in cycles right now, but this works just as well in Eevee. Shading looks a bit worse in my opinion, but Eevee works fine. So if your computer can't handle cycles very well, use Eevee. It's displacement within geometry nodes, so it's definitely not dependent on the render engine like other displacement is. All right, so back in cycles here, and I'm just going to change the base color here to a bluish color. I think that looks pretty nice. And I'm going to set the roughness to 0.2. I think this is pretty good already, but I want some sort of translucency in here. And if we increase the subservice, for example, it sort of gets a nice effect, but it also becomes pinkish. And that's not something that I want. So I'm just going to not touch that at all. Instead, I'm going to use this amazing shader, uh, which isn't used a lot, actually. And it's called the Translucent Beast. Yeah. So if I take this in here, you will see this is how it looks. And it gives this sort of see-through look. I think that's pretty cool, actually. I'm going to take it to a bluish color as well. Um, but it's also kind of dark. So I want to combine these two, but not by a mix shader, but actually with the add shader. So what this does is basically it adds one shader on top of the other. So if we combine these two and then plug it in here, you would get some of this translucency effect, but still also get the nice crispness and the roughness as well from the principal BSDF. So I think this is a pretty nice shader. We do actually have some other data to work with. So as you saw in the intro, um, we also have these rings to work with. And basically that's the displacement data that we have over here. So um, before we do that, I'm going to add in another effect, basically a way to create extra rings around it here. And we can do this by adding in a math node in our geometry notes. Uh, now again, by the way, just plugging it in here and setting it to modulo. So now we have this over here and the more or less you make this number, so the smaller it is like so, set it to 0.1, you get a bunch of these. Now, if we increase the subdivisions, it will remove some of these artifacts, but you will always keep them in there. So let's set this to 2000. You will see it becomes a lot better as uh, already and you can take it even higher but the higher you go the more heavy your scene becomes so i'm just gonna leave it at a thousand for now and make sure to tweak that later on all right so we have this modulo effect and that's basically tweaking the rings we have here so i'm gonna take this value over here and plug that into the group input open up the menu again with n and let's take our value name here which i'm gonna call rings and it can vary anywhere from zero to eight what that means is if i set this to zero everything will be gone if i set it to eight everything will be gone but you will still have your text here and if i go like to 0.5 we have what we just had just now all right so i'm going to set it to eight and that gives us a nice manipulation for the rings there now this is actual displacement so the displacement here generates some sort of displacement map and we can actually output this displacement map to use it within our shader to create another uh, unique different kind of shader instead of the one we just made we are going to use a capture attribute node and we are going to plug it in between the set position and the set material node. I'm going to change this from float color, basically meaning I want a gradient black to white output, which we can use as a height map or displacement map instead. And I'm going to take this modulo over here and plug that into the capture attribute. So basically now if we tweak the rings, it will also tweak the output here. Now the output is both the geometry, which is just what we are seeing and the attribute. So let's take our attribute here and plug it into dark group output. Now, if I go over to the modifier over here and open up the output attributes, you will see we now have an attribute window here. I can name this any Thing that I want but obviously I'm going to name it displacement and we can now hop on over to shading again and I'm just going to remove this shader real quick and let's just add in a attribute node which will allow us to use the data we just created and I'm going to take the name here which we added over here which is displacement so make sure this is the same one as this one over here so displacement and displacement now if I take this color and plug it into uh, the surface here uh, you will see we now have a height map output so we can use this as a driver you know for the color of our scene here so I'm going to actually duplicate our principal BCF and plug that in between it also has the same roughness because I duplicated it with shift and I'm going to take a color ramp in between and I'm going to set it to constant and take this white value and just drag it all the way in. And you already see we get these really cool effects. So if I add another color over here and I set it to something like this, we can actually 
take this and do some more magic with it by adding another math node, also setting this one to modulo. And now we get this rings going on forever and ever, and we can decrease the size. And I think, I mean, this looks pretty freaking dope if you ask me. So, you know, we can change this to any color. We can add in more colors if you want to just make sure you bring them to a point where it actually works. You know, you can tweak anything that you want with the colors here and you can easily switch between the two by either um, doing it like so, just switching it like this. I like to use a mix shader instead, just plugging it in here, taking it over there and taking this one in the top one. And now you can just switch with the factor here. So one or the other. Now, final step, we can also use a different input than text. Like I showed you, we can use a icon. So I'm just going to create some space here, delete this link over here, which is using our text. And I have an icon imported. Like I said, make sure you have the SVG add on import enabled, and then you can just drag it in here. And this is my icon over here. And I'm going to take the geometry here and I'm going to plug it into the target. The SVG icons usually are very, very tiny when you import them. You could fix this by actually scaling up your icon over here. Um, I don't want to do that. I want to do everything within geometry nodes. So obviously to scale something up, let's just add in a transform node, plug it in between, set the scale to something like, I don't know, 20. You will see this is the like icon. It is working. I am going to tweak it to make it even bigger. So I'm going to duplicate the transform icon here, set this one to five. Okay. So now we have sort of scaled it up a hundred times, you know, so 20 times five is a hundred. And you might think why well, use two different transform nodes. And I will show you why in just a bit. We have the, the look here. It's also working with the shader still fine. And we can switch between the two by changing this again. Now, obviously we want a more accessible workspace to do that because if I'm over here, I don't want to hop on over back to geometry nodes every time I want to switch to the icon mode. So instead, let's add in this convenient node called a switch. This node basically has two inputs, geometry inputs, false and true. I'm going to take this one into true and I'm going to take this one into false. And it was one output which I can take into the target here. This basically outputs the false output by default. Now, if I click here, it switches to true and now it will give you this output. We can actually take this, take our group input here and just plug it in here as well. Now we have the switch here and you could leave it at switch. I like to name it like icon slash text or so, you know, switch between the two. Um, and we can just click here now to actually change between the two, uh, conveniently giving you a switch between both the icon and the group input. You could also do this like a pattern or so. To do that, we can just take this transform node, add in a grid, add in a instance on points. Take the mesh and plug it into the points there and take this transform node and plug it into the instance and now take the instance and plug it into the target. Now nothing's happening and we once again have this eye over here and we hop on over and see what it does. Again, it has to do with the instances. Basically take a realized instance nodes, plug it in between and there you go. Now you have this grid of icons going. Now let's just change the size here. I'm going to set it to eight, making it slightly smaller than our actual plane here. And you will see this looks like this and we can increase the amount of vertices to something like a 12, for example. And there you go. We now have all of these small icons and we can maybe change it like so. The good thing is, shading still works fine so change to the other shader boom looks pretty dope yeah so this all still works dynamically and procedurally so yeah this is the entire tutorial i hope you enjoyed the video and if you did then please leave a like and subscribe also check out the patreon it would be great if you joined thanks for watching and see you in the next one a major thanks to the following patrons for supporting the channel you're amazing